Aloha, welcome to another episode of Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. I'm your co-host, Matt Johnson, here today with Justine Espiritu. As always, we're here every Thursday at 4 p.m. Uh, where we're talking to Hawaii's farmers, foodies, chefs, and people who are trying to make Hawaii's food system bigger and better. Uh, as always, you can join the conversation by tweeting in at, at thinktechhi. And you are also able to join the conversation by calling in at the number shown below. So, Justine, who do we have with us today? Hi, Matt. Thanks. So, Hi. today we have Jay Boss, who is the farm coach of Go Farm Hawaii. And it's super exciting. This is a, a program that's come up multiple times on the show. Um, a program that's been developed, it's a partnership uh, from a number of different organizations um, to kind of start bringing new farmers into the mix. And there's a lot of things that have developed from it since Jay and Nora came on board. Jay's also a co-founder of Counterculture and also known as Tiger Eye. So <laughs> Whoa, that's the first time I heard of that. <laughs> so, get an explanation on that. Thank, okay. you, so, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I want to start with giving um, a little bit of, about, bit of background about you and kind of where the programs, uh, the Go Farm program has kind of developed and gone from since you and Nora came on board and uh, more about kind of the graduates and how the program has evolved and then talk about some of your background and some of the other programs and developments that you've started here in Hawaii. All right. Well, thanks for having me on. Yeah. So, so yeah, Go Farm Hawaii started, I believe, about four years ago. Stephen Chang, who's been on the show, and Dave Ringett, who was at uh, Windward Community College at the time. And Steve is with the Ag Incubator Program. the Ag Incubator Part Program. And, um, and some other faculty and staff at, uh, at CTAR kind of saw the need for there's like academic programs, but for people that want to get into like actually like on the on the ground farming, how could we um, you know create some sort of training program, both actually like the agronomy and some of the business at the same time. So yeah, they they um, got some money from a few different organizations, the state, um, and it just took off. Started, I think it they were bold and just like started before. Like it was totally yeah. all ironed out how it was going to pan out. Um, and so I came on about three years ago. I saw the very beginning of it um, while I was doing graduate studies and was out at the research station of CTAR mm -hmm. in Waimanalo and saw Fred Rapoon was uh, one of the first uh, farm coaches, which is now my title and I've, I've never done it but I'm always like thinking I should get some like terry cloth wristbands and be out there and be like <laughs> all right like, let's do some laps come on, come on. on. <laughs> like two rows of weeds I'm, two rows imagine the coach yeah. from Rocky <laughs> <laughs> yeah or whistle or something clipboard I do have sometimes so yeah so it started um at, at windward kind of a windward side and leeward side program here on Oahu and now there's a program at um, in Kauai and then working with um, Maui Community College and we're just teaming up with the Kohala Center so there's going to be like a Go Farm program on um, on each of the of those islands and um, yeah so I came on and it was a fun opportunity for me I, I was you know part way through a PhD program and sort of missing teaching and missing um, being on the ground, and so this position for farm coach came open, um, which I took, and we happened to live in Waimanala, so it oh, was great. really nice and convenient. And um, now we're on our seventh cohort, just started um, mm -hmm. for the Windward Side um, program. And when I first came on, I guess the first people were just coming out of ag Pro, which is sort of like the second stage of the program and going into the incubator stage of the program um, and so really you know as I have been on and then um, my partner Nora eventually came on as like the coordinator for the um, windward side of the program we ironed out a lot of of the curriculum and trying to make it flow um, more from ag school to ag Pro, and now I have this pretty awesome website where we've got lots of readings, mm. uh, a lot, really, really a lot of nice material. I think 
people that go through the program probably are like, are you kidding? There's no way I could read mm -hmm. all of this. But once they go through the program, they have sort of eternal access to that website so they can go back and do you know, more of the reading as they go on through their And you guys have trajectory. all your, your lectures videotaped as well on there. And is that directory exclusive to the GoFarm students? Or it did is. you guys make that? I don't, it's, at this point it's not, um, it's not just like a publicly available thing. I'm it's just probably easy with, to uh, hack into. Stephen Chang. Yeah, it <laughs> it's probably, probably is. Easy yeah. to hack. Um, not good security. Yeah, just use my password, which is. Um, <laughs> Can we put it up on the screen? That'd be great. Um, so yeah, a lot of the lectures are recorded, and so that enables you know all of the different programs you know on this island and the other islands to have at least some shared curriculum instead of having to ask like poor Jonathan Dienick like, will you come over and do like the Talk lecture again? Yeah. Um, Who's like a soils rock yes, star? Yes, great. You know, great. We have a really nice presentation, and you know, great, great people that we've been able to have come talk, but we don't want to burn them out. Right. So it's been great to have them um, on video. And for me, it was really fun having been in CTARN and the program to have gotten to know you know some of the faculty and be able to sort of you know ask people to come talk who I thought their work and experience would be really, you know, applicable for, for people wanting to start out in small, small scale, diversified ag. And, and the program in theory is, um, I mean, and in practice is, is agnostic on whether we're trying to teach mm. organic practices or, um, you know, conventional. I think, you know, definitely the, the idea is that we're focused on sustainable, um, practices, but almost everybody that comes into the program, um, you know, has a really strong interest in organic practices. So that, you know, to a certain extent has influenced, you know, who we've asked to come talk and, and, and about mm -hmm. what subjects. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's developed, especially um, on the windward side and at Waimanalo into a, like a really robust program and all the other programs are, are younger but are on the same um, trajectory and you know trying to churn out some some good farmers and I think at the moment I think we have like around 15 people that are in the incubator program in Waimanalo and then the leeward side program is kind of now moving up to Wailua and they're gonna be starting another incubator up there um, and I think on all the other islands, um, that's sort of, you know, down the line in the next year or two is to have an incubator program as well. And then there are all these neat things that people that are in the incubator or have come through and then gone on to find their own mm -hmm. land have um, helped start, like Farm Link, which I think you guys have had mm -hmm. people come talk about, which is, a, you know, a lot of the people in the incubator sell through Farm Link, and we have a big um, walk-in refrigerator on the research station in Waimanalo that, you know, both people in the incubator program and other farmers who um, are selling stuff through FarmLink on the windward side can come drop their produce um, off, which is nice for them. Instead of having to drive into town to do deliveries, um, they can just go, you know, drop it at one place and then um, Rob and Daniel and others drive around and schlep the stuff. Mm -hmm. um, around and then Friends with Farms Cooperative mm. sort of was born um, with a lot of incubators and other folks um, well, in we've Waimanalo. We've had on the show as well, yep. Law Man and Sean. Yeah. So like to, you know, they also it. use our, um, our walk-in refrigerator and, and again a lot of people that are both in the Ag, um, Ag Pro to a certain extent but, but especially the incubator. And well, and then that's great to see the, the things that have developed because the program is, you know, you're teaching uh, folks how to farm, getting them to start up their business, but what, has it been a surprise to you to see the farmers that kind of graduate and kind of take the initiative to kind of address these other issues that are going on in Hawaii and make this collaboration? Right. Now you have this, like, <coughs> wide network of graduates that also, I think you have a lot of them come and speak and do mm -hmm. some of the lectures as well to just talk about kind of the field of what's going on yeah with the marketing I think it's been great you know we have gone to a number of, of national conferences where um, you know there's like this whole kind of burgeoning like incubator 
farm movement. So there's like a lot of them around the country. And in a lot of cases, they kind of like baby the incubator farmers where the incubator farmers will grow the food, but the staff and like the organization that's hosting mm -hmm. the incubator farmer, they'll basically run a CSA and just tell the farmers like, hey, we need from you, you know, 100 bunches of kale um, this week. And so the farmers are just farming right. and then the staff are like the middle people. So the, so the farmers never really develop you know, marketing skills yeah, and business, business skills. And, you know, partly I think it's just because we have a, you know, a small staff and are a svelte organization. And, and partly I think it's just, you know, Stephen's philosophy, which I think has been great, which is sort of like, no way, like, we're going to create, like, the opportunity for these people, but we're not going to, like, hold their hands and baby them. And so I think the people that have succeeded um, have succeeded because they you know, have taken the initiative and have started, you know, started the co-op and started um, FarmLink and sort of seen, like, needs. And then instead of, you know, being like, somebody should do something about this, yeah. have done something about it, and then, yeah, everybody has benefited from that, which has been really, really, really inspiring um, to see. And, like, Nora and I are sort of always joking about, like, purposefully like programming our like obsolescence like <laughs> um and when <laughs> like when we started you know we were growing a lot and producing and you know selling to the Waimanalo co-op and we started selling to a few restaurants and um to farm link and then we would sort of like the people who really wanted to like step up would be like hey you should like take this account and so now like we don't have to like do any like yeah, you know yeah, yeah. we're not we're doing much less actual production ourselves now and, and people have taken those accounts over which is you know that's that's the whole yeah. purpose so that's been great to see people step up and do that um i was just getting ready to finally be able to ask a question <laughs> but i just found out that it's time to go to a break all right so when we come back let's promise that i'm <laughs> going to get to ask some questions okay that's great so we'll be right back for a very healthy summer, watch Viva Hawaii. We're giving you the best tips and with our best health coach here. So, Viva Health Coach. Viva la comida saludable. Aloha, my name is Josh Green. I serve as senator from the Big Island on the Kona side, and I'm also an emergency room physician. My program here on ThinkTech is called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'll have guests that should be interesting to you twice a month. We'll talk about issues that range from mental health care to drug addiction, to our healthcare system, and any challenges that we face here in Hawaii. We hope you'll join us. Again, thanks for supporting ThinkTech. Aloha! How you doing there, lassies and laddies? This is Angus McTech here on ThinkTech Hawaii, and on my favorite show, Hibachi Talk, with my good old buddies, Gordo the Texara and Andrew the Security Guy. Please join us every Monday. No, it's Friday. Every Friday from 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. here on ThinkTech Hawaii. And you can also find us on YouTube, Hibachi Talk. Aloha! Welcome back. Thanks for joining us at Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. Uh, my name is Justine Espiritu. This is my co-host, Matthew Johnson. Today's guest is Jay Bost, aka Tiger Eye. Thank you to <laughs> everyone for joining us. So we are getting um, getting here the background and kind of re or new kind of developments in Go Farm and, and how it's going. Really quickly, can you go over again the, the different stages? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, no, I'm just hanging out here. Maybe I can get a cup of coffee or something. I don't know. I'm fine. I'm fine. Don't worry so about I me. don't know if, I mean, we could try to pull up that one slide, but, you know, basically, you know, I think this was Stephen Chang's doing. Um, I'll, I, I get confused even still, but. Wait, which, which, that, which slide? slide? The slide that had, it was like a poster that, and it had like a nice little like trajectory that showed like the different stages. There we go. Oh, I mean, it's kind of hard to see there. There is on it. Um, where it says stages and curriculum. But, um, so yeah, basically it starts with Ag Curious, and that's like, oh, I'm, I've heard of this program, I'm interested, and so you just come to a one night seminar that's either, mm. you know, it's, it's wherever. In our case, it's at Winter Community College. And you guys get like hundreds of people showing up for that. Yeah, in the, in the past, like there have been like a hundred. The last one for us, who I think was in the 60s, 
Um, so yeah, Ag Curious, and then you know we we bring students in at the different stages to kind of talk about their experience and not like in a mean way, but we try and you know scare some people off. Like this isn't a joke. Like yeah, you're yeah, gonna yeah. be like outside sweating, like bugs are gonna eat your plants, you're gonna be, you know, sad sometimes. It, it turns into gonna like you. <laughs> um, so, you're gonna be um, sad sometimes, I'm like. <laughs> so, so yeah, then they do ag exposure, and that's, you know, three or four weeks where we'll, you know, they'll come and work at the site with people in the different stages to kind of see it and, uh, yeah, get a sense for what the program is about. Meanwhile, we're kind of checking them out. Like, is this person taking like water breaks every five minutes, and <laughs> you know, pulling up people's crops instead of the weeds? Um, and then we'll go on some farm tours. And so, you know, typically that'll be like twenty people. So it'll go from like a hundred or sixty down to twenty, and then from that twenty is typically really difficult. We got to pick twelve people because yeah. twelve is like how many plots there are. So it's um, cutthroat. I mean, they're, it gets a little they cutthroat. A... Yeah, yeah. And it's. I mean, we tell people, and you know, people that don't get in, then we're like, we'll go volunteer on some farms, or um, you know, don't give up, apply next time. And so yeah. we've had people. You know, if people like persevere and apply again, then they typically. My eighth grade get basketball in. coach told me the same. Right thing. there, yeah. you go. Yeah. So yeah, we go egg curious ag exposure and then they come into ag school which is four months long like introductory style and then from that to ag pro we're looking at the ag pro plots there um and then the ag pro they do business planning and they run like a little csa like a 10 member mm -hmm. csa for 10 weeks they got to make money um and that one especially is like a you know, a ton of work. People put in like 20, 30 hours oh, like a, full -time a week. Job. Yeah. And then once they successfully complete um, Ag Pro, then that makes them eligible to go into the Ag Incubator stage. Which is cool. So with Ag Incubator, they actually get to lease uh, Yeah, they're a leasing land, land. Yeah, for so up it's, to it's three years, shared equipment. Um, and then the idea is, that, you know, during that time, they're kind of getting a rec, you know, like a track record in terms of business, in terms of production, and then it's easier for them to go out and lease land or get a loan because yeah, they're not just experience. like somebody walking in like, oh, I'd like to, I'd like to start a farm, yeah, yeah. and the state or KS or whoever is like, yeah. so, like, have yeah. you ever done it? Um, like I saw a movie one time. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, but that's what's really, you know, fascinating. I mean, really, one of the largest challenges is talking about having a more food secure state is, you know, there's all these different issues, right? Access to land, but also having people interested and available and skilled to go out and farm. Yeah. And I mean, that's the amazing thing about Go Farm. It's, you know, one of, you know, there's only a few programs that are actually focused on trying to do this. So one, yeah. it's fascinating that you have so many people showing up for Ag yeah. Curious, so that, that's great. Um, but then actually get them to a point and say, you know, this is the skills that you need on both the business side and the agronomic side, but then also showing them the realities of this is what you got to do to be able to yeah. do it, but in a much better way than just saying, like if you're trying to lease land from a normal landowner saying, oh, okay, yeah, here's your 20 acre lease, go for it, good yeah. luck. Yeah. But there's no access to water, no equipment, yeah. you know, all those kind of things. Yeah. So it's, it's great what you guys are doing, it's, it's huge. I, th it, I think it's really uh, an amazing, I think it's an amazing program, and I, and I think that for me, it's been really interesting to have, you know, at least the part that I work with, be on like a land-grant university's research mm. station, which, you know, from my perspective, like that's what land grants, especially in this uh, state, like should be doing is, you know, figuring out how to like make the state more yeah. food secure. So, I, I mean, I think it's great that there's people that are just like members of the public like learning how to produce food um doing that on a program that's you know on the land grants land and accessing a lot of the yeah. you know extension agents and faculty it's like and extension to extension really. yeah i mean and, and you know in my opinion that's what like our tax money should be going for and that was like the purpose of the land grant and you know many land grants i feel like have yeah for money reasons sort of like lost their um focus a little bit and, you know, just because, like, they work, they're like a research arm of industry because industry right. has they put the, the money. money. Yeah. Um, and so, 
you know, Seed is a good example of that. And, um, you know, that's one thing I think we wanted to talk more about is this neat project transition. came uh, out of, <laughs> okay. uh, you know, both people just in the, you know, farmers, gardeners teamed up with some people from CTAR and started this thing called the Hawaii Public Seed Initiative, um, which is affiliated with the Kohala Center. If you're interested, Google um, Hawaii Public Seed Initiative. They had a couple of meetings around the state kind of, you know, talking about how do we produce more seed here? How do we figure out um, people that want to grow food? How do they find out what varieties are going to do well? And so on their website, they've started this cool thing that's called like the seed selector tool. Uh, okay. So you can go on there and like put in your, um, I don't know if you put your land, latitude and land, latitude and longitude or you just put your address in but basically it's like built in with with a map and um, people with similar climactic conditions around the state it's going to show what they've said which varieties have done well for them hmm. and now it's moving more and more towards um, trying to do some seed production actually here in the islands so you know trying to get varieties that are well um, you know, well adapted to our, our conditions here. And so that's just launched a website and it's Hawaii Seed Growers Network. Mm. Um, and I think in 2017, they're going to start offering actually seed for sale that people in this network um, have grown. So we're growing some seed right now in Waimanalo, some um, like Flint corn, um, you know, for flour or polenta and some... Uh, Jamaica or Roselle or it's got all these different names. Red Zinger, it's like what's in Red Zinger tea. Mm. Um, we're growing some seed of that. And, and so, so is the point to like bring new products to, to market or just what you know will, will grow well for a farmer? Yeah, I mean or partly it like it's to find like, you know, new and novel either crops or new and novel varieties. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's really about you know, what can farmers, instead of like randomly getting on like a mainland seed company's website and they're like, oh, this is this awesome cucumber, but it's like, this is an awesome cucumber in California. Sure. Yeah. Um, and, you know, really farming for me here, and so I've been here farming for, you know, four and a half years now, has been like a really humbling experience. Like the pest and disease pressure out here mm. is just like, Hardcore, and you know, like I said, you know, we're gonna we tell people that you're gonna be sad, um, <laughs> especially if you're wanting to do things, um, you know, organically. It's just like, you know, every day practically, a students like, oh, I'm trying to figure out like what's going on with my like beets. Why are there all these holes in it? And it's like, oh, that's like the beet army worm, and um, oh, what's going on with this? And it's like, oh, that's like. I don't know what fungus their bacteria is clogging the vascular system. And but you don't take care of all those problems for them? <laughs> I wish I could, <laughs> but <laughs> so, you know, so that's where, you know, variety trials, you know, that the university does and we can draw on or um, this Hawaii Public Seed Growers Network has sort of, um, you know, done some variety trials and we just did this dry bean trial. So trying to identify varieties we the, that the do bean, well bean here, festival. the bean fest that we had uh, last week. Um, because if you can find a variety that does, just does well because it has like genetic characteristics that make it um, adapted to, um, you know, the heat, to pests and disease, like that's just going to make your life as a farmer easier instead of having to fight and spray and pamper something um, to try and keep it cooler. So yeah, this is a neat, this is actually a really neat example right here. Um, basil downy mildew is like this huge issue and it turns out actually that I didn't realize this until a couple years ago. There's a really big basil industry here okay. in Hawaii and, and there has been some trouble with people spraying unregistered fungicides on it and that's for this um, you know, new so disease, basal downy mildew that came in in like 2010, and it's an issue on the mainland as well. So through like personal connections and um, yeah, just in seed and ag world, we got some varieties from uh, Vitalis Seed, which is a Dutch seed company that's breeding for 
um, you know, genetic resistance to basal downy mildew. So we've been doing that, and Lee Leeward Community College has done some trials on that. Uh, Jerry Sugano, the Oahu Extension agent here um, on Oahu, is doing that. And that picture that we were looking at was um, Paulo, one of our stellar um, incubator students. Um, so he was growing that, got to sell the basil, you know, see these different varieties, decide, okay, this one's like not getting basil downy mildew, but it tastes like junk, or this one, um, hey, bud, you coming on? Here's your co-guest. <laughs> All right. Who, who's this guy? This is Kai Lu. Hi, Kai Lu. He's a farmer, farm coach in training. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's a good weeder. Family dynasty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the, that basil program has um, project has been you know really neat and. Do you get the go? Is that tied into Go Farm at all? Do the students? Yeah. Um, so we end up, um, you know, a lot of the trials that we do. Um, oh, who's who's that on? Uh, yeah, that's the TV Kyler there. Weedy when he was just a little Whoa. guy. Oh, who's that? Out in the sweet potatoes. <laughs> um, so yeah, we try to involve students. Um, and really instill in them, you know, from the get-go, an interest in seed, an interest in doing variety trials, and uh, yeah, just keep people excited and experimenting because that's the only way you're going to succeed. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's we just kind of ran out of time, but thanks for coming on to share. My pleasure. <laughs> thanks for coming on, Kylo. On. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's great Can to hear kisses? more about your background and as well as watching and, himself <laughs> and the development. I did the future. same thing. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Beans. So we're here every Thursday with a new guest. So please join us again next week. watching ThinkTech Hawaii, Hawaii's leading digital media platform for civic engagement, raising public awareness on tech, energy, diversification, and globalism. Great content for Hawaii from ThinkTech.